Hi guys, this is Jean-François Marie, Chief Solution Architect here at Calrain, France. Thank you for joining this session. We're going to talk about high-performance Rocky TCP solutions for end-to-end -end NVMe communication. We are very pleased to welcome you at SDC20, and we are very lucky at Calrain to have four presentations this year. The first one will be a customer use case and will be presented by Jean-Baptiste Rio, one of our senior FAE. Uh, Remy Goguet, our senior software architect, will go through how we build composable architectures. And myself, I'm very lucky to have two sessions. The first one you are just attending, and the second one at the same time um, in the virtual conference um, will be about uh, how we build composable architectures to, uh, to build next generation data centers. So first about this session, what's the abstract? Um, you all aware, I'm sure that SSDs are getting more and more denser and have more and more performance. Um, and it's really massive uh, parallel protocol uh, to, to take a benefit of, of those new devices. Um, we are lucky to have a new protocol to address them um, internally with NVMe and other fabrics, uh, Ethernet, fiber channel, and so on so that we can exchange fast data. Um, so this presentation will be about, yes, um, we have NVMe, TCP, Worky, and others, and we can, I'm going to try to give you a bit of history and to try to compare those two protocols. What are the best use cases in order to take benefit of those two protocols and architectures? Uh, about myself, um, so as I told you, Jean-Francois, I've been 30 years in this industry, 25 years plus in the storage industry for data centers. Um, joining several companies uh, as solution architect and its roles, um, such as Sun Microsystems, uh, EMC, um, and Netta for the la for the latest 13 years, where I had different roles such as uh, solution architect, managers, and director of products for for EMEA. Uh, I'm very active in the community world. I've been active for for Senia for more than 10 years. I run the French organization for two years, and I have a master degree in electronics. But very interesting to run virtual events. You think that you cannot have two sessions in parallel, and I was very surprised to have that. And this year, my, the two sessions I'm going to present, uh, this one about NVMe and the second one about uh, composable architectures, actually are running at the same time. And this is kind of an ambiguity here. Um, however, I think we're going to interact over Slack, and I would be very happy to answer all your questions around this virtual event and, and those two presentations. So let's get started with a bit of history. Let me show you some numbers. Make a guess, what are those numbers? Those numbers are disk RPMs. When I started in my career man, doing, dealing with storage, uh, we are selling fat, very large drives um, with small capacity, 3200 like RPM. Um, then after Within the 10 next years, I've seen the increase in terms of the size, reaching some terabytes, but the, 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 the performance nearly was multiplied by five to reach 15K RPM. I suspect you'll recall those famous 146 uh, uh, 15K RPM uh, drives. So it was hundreds of gigabytes, not terabytes, not no more than speed. And it was interesting to see that we were dealing a lot with, with, with those drives because they were failing and they were not that fast and not that fast enough for the demanding applications. Uh, let's continue. What about those numbers? Do you recall them? Uh, smaller ones, but another, another interesting history here. Um, those numbers are the max IOPS. Um, so uh, 300 IOPS were the max number of IOPS for 15,000 K uh, RPM SaaS drives, right, 300 IOPS. And guess what happened? Um, those drives had tens of milliseconds of response time while applications were demanding millisecond response time. Um, I remember releasing SAP app applications and where the best was around two to three milliseconds um, to get a satisfying installation. So for the many years, drives have been the, the DC bottleneck uh, in terms of the architectures, in terms of the sizing, etc. And guess what? All the vendors were doing, they were putting in front of application uh, massive cache. Suspect you remember EMC Symmetrics, 
um, Itachi, uh, VSPs, and others with those terabytes of cache just to hide um, HDD uh, failures and HDD uh, very high latency and, and, and very low speed. So what happened? Like 10 years ago, SSD started to, have to, come, to come to market, um, and we see direct effects. At that time, I was NetApp, um, and I've seen that 15x type of difference in terms of IOPS. And what's happened? Uh, suddenly, the backend uh, uh, drive started not to be the bottleneck, but it put a lot of pressure uh, on the IO stack. Storage controllers had to rewrite completely the IO stack to take benefit of those SSDs. And the reason is very simple. Um, HDD uh, have a single line because they have a head, they have rotate, rotate, they are rotating devices, while SSDs are just electronics and they need parallelism, right? So you, you, at that time, um, uh, we had that consideration around ma massive parallelisms um, for, for the first time. Um, immediate gains, low latency, very interesting to see uh, that the drives were not the hotspots. Then we are in 2020. What are the latest figures? Um, <clears throat> the latest um, first generation um, SaaS SSDs are running around 30 kilo IOPS, while now uh, NVMe or SaaS SSD Gen 3 can sustain half a million IOPS. And the latest, latest version of Gen 4 SSD, nearly all running over NVMe. Uh, are about 1.4 million IOPS. You see that magnitude of increase in terms of performance. It's a, it's a by 3,000, by 1,000 factors. So guess what? IO vendors, they have to do the job again, and they have to, re to, to reconsider the IO stack completely because no single server can sustain that, that load. So uh, it's interesting that all the things are running uh, across standards, and that's very important. So I, I told you um, that the need um, of an evolution from SCSI to NVMe was very important because the change of the device, the, the way we address the device is completely different. And very happy at Calray because we are talking about massive parallelism to say that we have a protocol to exchange data in a massive parallel way. So this is really a revolution for the IO stack. Um, NVMe is addressing local devices, allowing servers to access faster um, the, the drives, and decreasing the pressure or the amount of layers you have to go through to address the drive, moving from the SAS layers down to the NVMe layers. That's very interesting. However, um, the history again is interesting. Um, remember mainframes, drive were internal, right? And then open systems. We tried to get the drives out. Then came uh, NAS, then came fiber channel, so that we have a better consolidation way, better way of sharing and provisioning devices. And suddenly came HCI. Yeah, yeah, you know, those, those things are too complex. We need to have all built in. But it's failing again, right? There are so many things which are not working properly that uh, we have to consider another way. So coming those days, we have composable architectures. And the idea is to have those drives out, uh, the, the servers in another way of sharing. And the protocol of choice built around standards is, is NVMe of a fabric supporting many protocols. Um, as we can see here, you have several ways, right? A PCI. NVMe of a PCI to exchange internally, um, NVMe of a fabric uh, with different flavors, uh, running with fiber channel, running with TCP and Rocky. So basically two techniques, right? I want to go super fast. I want to, to minimize the impact on my x86. I'm going to run RDMA type of techniques, and Rocky would be the best choice here. Why? Um, but you need specific equipment, right? If you want to go, um, you know, using common Ethernet, then you're going to go choose uh, TCP, good enough latency, uh, good enough architectures, and then you can scale and share what you have. So it's very interesting to say that I can, you can reuse your your own uh, infrastructure today. If we if we see what what we have in terms of the best use cases, obviously the most demanding 
applications are still running over fiber channel. Um, and fiber channel had to have NVMe to address those parallel devices. So F FC and VME is interesting when it comes to the enterprise uh, category zero type of applications. And the reason is very simple because all enterprise customers have uh, fiber channel switches. And it's, it's, very, it's very interesting that they just have to reuse the equipment, uh, have the latest drivers to run NVMe on the top of it and get a, a kind of a 30% uh, improvement here. While the new applications the new way of doing things, uh, the new trends in terms of development or in terms of AI or in terms of the containers, etc., are driving the new standards adoption. Um, and you see here two categories on, on the hand left, left hand side and right hand side. Uh, either I, I need to go super fast, I need to have super low latency uh, with a uh, uh, no, no SQL type of database, uh, Cassandra type of application, etc then you, you're going to prefer running Rocky while those, those big, big containers uh, such as Hadoop for the data lakes, um, um, MongoDB database, just to, you know, to, to get the data here, you may, you may be okay just to, to just run and choose TCP. But the, the good th the thing is important. There's no one size fits for all, right? Uh, and perhaps it's time, it's difficult to choose um, one generic for all your applications if you have very demanding applications in, in terms of latency. However, uh, choose, choosing Ethernet as a common way uh, is very interesting because you can have both um, low latency with Rocky um, and kind of common things with TCP. You see here NVMe Express um, as a very, uh, very strong roadmap in terms of the adoption of things, new technology, determinism, persistent memory, um, you know, some um, better uh, management things and, you know, um, namespace type of uh, uh, architectures, etc. Have a look at NVMe Express website, uh, very strong roadmap uh, to enhance NVMe and to enhance NVMe over fabric and to have more, more features here. NVMe, as I told you, is really pushing boundaries. Let's see how and where. I told you, remember those drives, those numbers, 300 IOPS, right? HDD. Um, pressure is really on drives. Storage nodes as well as compute nodes were demanding milliseconds type of response time. Remember those numbers are on SAP like 25 years ago. Um, usual protocols between compute node and storage node were fiber channel, SCSI, InfiniBand, some NAS here, while the backend from the storage node were only SCSI. Um, <clears throat> so the, the uh, pressure is on drive, and what happened at that time, as I told you, storage arrays, storage node had to implement cache techniques in order to hide those poor drives uh, latency. Then came SSDs. Um, so here in a wide range, coming from, um, let's say, tens of Ks of IOPS to half million IOPS, um, the latency around hundreds of microseconds, these are started to put pressure on the storage node. You may recall what happened, the rise of pure storage and others, um, taking the benefit of those new devices. Um, I was net at that time and we had to rewrite completely the IO stack to take benefit of those new devices so that we could re respond correctly to the IO pressure coming from the applications. So um, pressure has moved up um, on the storage controllers, on the, sto on the IO stack, um, and what's happened at that time, uh, storage arrays had to re reinvent IO stacks to support SSDs. And what ha what's happening today? Um, we have in even more powerful SSDs. One at, well, as I told you, right, one and a half million IOPS per SSD. So if you take 20 drive, 24 drives in an array, it's going to give you 40 million IOPS. The most powerful computer um, in, 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 one, um, uh, in one box is around three to four million IOPS. So there's no computer today that can sustain or can absorb 40 million IOPS. So you need to share. Uh, what's, so what's happening? Um, Today, those new devices are now putting pressure, none, nonetheless, on the um, 
on the storage nodes, but also on the compute nodes or the full stack. So that's very impressive, right? So yeah, we are talking here with the about devices with 10 of microseconds of response time, allowing application to take benefit of those, but there is a consideration uh, of parallelism here. Uh, I remember when we started to, to test those SSDs with our old techniques, um, completely tuned for SCSI, um, it, it wasn't turning well because we, we had uh, you know single streams, not parallelized. We have to rethink how we were addressing those devices just for a benchmark purpose. It's exactly the same now for, for applications. So another thing, you know, containers are very interesting for that matter because they are massively parallel. So you have millions of them running on the same infrastructure. So that's just interesting how things are moving forward to absorb so those IOPS. And this is really the, the, the beginning of the story. So uh, as I told you about uh, this presentation, um, TCP, Rocky, what's the best choice? Obviously, you, you have a fiber channel element, but the the discussion about Rocky and fiber channel is, is really the same, right? You need a dedicated architecture. You need dedicated switches. You cannot use your uh, standard uh, Ethernet switches, right? So comparing TCP and Rocky is kind of the same comparing TCP and fiber channel. So let's stick to that comparison here. So I bid for you this kind of summary uh, so that you have all at once. Um, so first, um, what type of driver, what type of HBA do I need uh, to run those protocols? So the good news for TCP, just run your startup TCP, um, have the uh, NVMe uh, OF driver, and it's going to go, right? While you, if you need Rocky, you, um, you want specific NIC supporting RDMA uh, to run uh, NVMe uh, OF RDMA Rocky, right? Uh, both protocols support direct connect. Uh, you don't need switches. I told you that, yes, if you want, you have a, a full infrastructure uh, with switches. You're going to need specific features in your in your in your switch. Uh, if on the switch you have Rocky like DCB uh, protocols, um, however, you can have completely direct connect things, and this is what we are working at Calray is to avoid the use of switch, right? To decrease dramatically the price of the infrastructure in order to get benefits of those latent low latency networks and protocols. Um, Obviously, if you're looking for latency, um, you, you, you have an application running uh, on local nodes with NVMe SSD, and you would love to reproduce that, that same latency and performance, you will not go through uh, using TCP. Um, the path here is to consider Rocky, obviously, and you, you will see that the demanding applications are not embracing NVMe uh, TCP, NVMe OF TCP, sorry. They are embracing NVMe OF uh, Rocky. Um, and the, the example I have in mind is, is VMware, for instance. Um, the thing is, which is important is the, the pressure on the x86, right? Um, if x, x86 is running the IO stack, um, TCP is very demanding in terms of the number of, of the megahertz uh, and the uh, x86 cycles, while Rocky, because it's memory to memory mapping, will put l less pressure on x86. So, if you look at your infrastructure and if you if you are x86 bound, um, it's interesting to consider those alternative protocols to decrease the pressure on the x86. Um, if you have iSCSI um, infrastructure, right? iSCSI is okay, um, but it's not about of, 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 of uh, latency, not very good latency. The good news is running on TCP. So obviously um, the replacement for iSCSI will be on the NEOF TCP. You just use your standard NIC, you use your standard equipment, as I said, just have the right driver, and right away you will have far better performances. Um, and to give you some figures, uh, here at Calray, we, su we support multi-million IOPS just over TCP, while it's completely impossible running iSCSI. So it's very straightforward, and you, you may have a, a, a very important gain here just moving uh, NVMe over TCP. Um, InfiniBand, yeah, you know it's very expensive, uh, quite commonly used for HPC, high demanding application in terms of bandwidth or very, very low uh, um, latencies. Obviously, the replacement is not TCP. 
Um, the, the, the past year we, is better to, um, to embrace Rocky, um, which, is, which has been big for that. Um, and I told you, right, either you go to the past to have a switch fabric, uh, and, and maybe you will compare the price of the InfiniBand infrastructure versus the DCB infrastructure to run Rocky, and you say, hey, it's, gonna, it's gonna be the same. Uh, yeah, maybe, right, not, not sure, but how there are alternatives to, to go switchless, which is very interesting. And as I told you, a fiber channel alternative. Um, I've, I've been doing sun for many years. Um, maybe you don't want to go that pass uh, or you are in that pass. And the good news is you have alternative and choices. There's not just fiber channel to run things. Um, here, the protocol proposes things you can consider uh, so that you have the, really the choice for your infrastructures. So in summary, TCB for me is best in terms of capacity and general purpose applications. Rocky is really best for high performance and low, uh, low latency purposes. So how do we build a future? How do we enable composable architectures? First, it's important to start with standards. And at CalRay, we rely on NVMe standards. One important thing for us, if you want to embrace composable architectures, is independency. You don't want to be locked in. You want to freedom of choice. Um, so it's important for us to rely on a standard NVMe uh, driver in order for you to choose the best OS you, you prefer in your data center. So, um, and embracing NVMe enables you to start with NVMe emulation, right? NVMe emulation allows us to have our card seen as an NVMe device. So any things behind the card will be seen as an NVMe resource. That's very interesting. Uh, you, need, you don't need complex setup. That's very straightforward. And this is really the first stone for independency. Um, and very interesting to embrace uh, the massive parallel, parallelism behind uh, the card. So how Calray smart card storage adapters are, are built, right? It starts with a processor. It's a homemade processor, 80 core. Uh, this is our third generation processor. Um, massively parallel architecture, non blocking IO architectures. Each core has a coprocessor to do fast cut computation, uh, many DMAs, um, crypto accelerators to help you drive your security very efficiently. Uh, on the top of it, uh, we have our developed our own SDK. Uh, compilers uh, and so on and so forth, so that you can, we can build and you can build your storage services. Uh, the name of this SDK is Access Core Storage (ACS), and it really the uh, the cornerstone uh, of storage services on the top of MPPA. What are we doing today? Um, we are really offloading everything NVMe OF, NVMe TCP. NVMe, NVMe OF, uh, Rocky, we can run both in parallel. You can choose one or the other or both at the same time. Uh, we are terminating TCP sessions. We are handling everything Ethernet. Um, that's very, very, very interesting here. Um, we have dedicated one gig Ethernet to the management. So you can have that as a, as a standalone card um, within an x86 box, or you can use it uh, through a BMC uh, in a in a FBOF or GBOF if you prefer um, to, to have like a storage device. Obviously, uh, we are P we we are PCI compliant. Uh, we are PCI Gen 4 uh, x16, um, and we are supporting NVMe emulation and peer to peer. Peer to peer is interesting. Uh, we are talking about uh, I/O pressure. We are talking about offloading things. And as I told you before, x86 have a high pressure in terms of I/O. And what we are proposing here is to offload x86 I/Os, all those I/Os going to the drives. So using peer-to-peer technology, um, if you hook one of those cards in an x86 box, um, the x86 will not manage the drive anymore. We'll take over. We will manage the I/O to the drives. Um, so the x86 running in the, in the system we just handle the application. So it's a big, big, big gain for you, right? And perhaps 30, 
uh, of the x86 um, IO, uh, sorry, x86 use um, is, is just done for IO. What if you have one card, one system offloading that completely? Um, and you will see with the specs, um, we have so many calls that we can run um, the fully loaded uh, IO and VME OF plus some extra services such as errors coding, right? So that's very interesting to combine those things. So the value here is you, you could be a companion of an x86 and offloading all the data services. So here, just a, a look at the card with some specs and all the features we have in the cards, some, some figures in terms of performance, and you, you will see that we are completely aligned to, to help you um, sustain the, the next generation SSD uh, IOPS, right? Uh, and we're going to see an example just after after the slide. Um, <clears throat> we have, um, as I told you, um, a set of tools and software development kit in order to, to add those services. Um, and we have completely embraced the new way of handling I.O. Um, we, we have separated control and management plane uh, with data plane. So for us, as I told you, 80 calls organized in five clusters of 16 calls. One cluster of 16 calls will run uh, control and management, and uh, the other four clusters, um, 64 calls, will run the data plane. That's where NVMe, uh, OIF, TCP, and Rocky are sitting. This is where we can handle those million IOPS, right? 64 calls just to do IO. Uh, as a reference architecture, we are working with our partner, Western in Taiwan, to build uh, the, the next generation uh, GBOF. So I'm using the terminology GBOF here because this is quite well known, but this is not exactly what we are doing here. A GBOF is just a bunch of flash, meaning that the array may be accessed using SCSI or TCP or, or Rocky, right? And, and this is what we're not building here. We are building an FBOF, right? You may not be used to that terminology, but I, and I think that's important to, to, to adopt it because FBOF means fabric bunch of flash, meaning that your bunch of flash is addressed with a fabric. And what he, this is what, he, what are Rocky and TCP, they are fabrics. Um, so it's important to have this new terminology here. Um, so you see the chassis, quite common chassis, uh, 24 drives in the front, um, and a set of IO module in the back. What is interesting here is for us, a, a, this kind of architecture where you, you don't want to be in a blocking factor. You, we don't want the car to be in, in between your, uh, your application, uh, and the SSDs uh, in terms of you know slowing uh, the the performance. Um, let me give you some figures here. 24 drives, um, Gen 3, with nearly half a million IOPS per drive, will give you around 14 million IOPS. If you take the spec we have for the cards, two cards will handle like 8 million IOPS. So. If you have 40 million IOPS coming from the drives and your cars only deliver 8 million IOPS, you are slowing down the drives. You do not take benefit of the drives. The good thing about this architecture, this is completely flexible. You really can choose two cards, four cards, six cards, depending on the performance you want. Either you want more gigabyte per second or either you want more IOPS per second. Um, and it's important to see that if you have six cards, um, so you're going to get 20 plus million IOPS from the cards, uh, you will not be card bound, you will be SSD bound. So you will take full benefit of your SSD performance. And we want that, right? And we are ready for Gen 4. So if you put Gen 4 drives, again, with six cards, it's going to be interesting to see that you may have, uh, you may be uh, drive, uh, card bound. However, you will take more than 30, uh, 30 million IOPS type of performance which is very, very interesting to see what will happen here um, with the next generation architectures. So um, watch out uh, the land space. Uh, this bus will be out uh, very soon. So what are we doing at Calray? What are the four guidelines in terms of what the things we are doing? First, we are mad about performance, latency, IOPS, and uh, bandwidth. Uh, we want you to take benefit of uh, the, uh, the next generation SSD, NVMe SSDs. And we want to make sure that we are helping you offloading your x86, right? 
those are causing uh, IOA limitations. Those are the blocking factors those days. And with our solution, we believe that we can remove those bottlenecks. We are working on the cost, obviously, and we are fully behind composable architectures. Um, one of the best examples we, we demonstrate during our Remy Goge presentation is how we can dismantle HCI, how we can disaggregate HCI. Um, HCI is just a set of islands uh, or silos of, of storage. Um, we, we know how poor it is on how handling IO. We know how what are the problems in terms of the, of the interconnect. And what we, we do here at Calray is we can um, offload completely the x86, offload any data pass uh, from the interconnect so that you have no more bottleneck in terms of the IO access. Our solutions are fully flexible, right? Fully programmable, as I told you, uh, from a control and management plane uh, to a data plane using SPDK. And obviously, we are future proof, right? We leverage standards, NVMe standard, uh, NVMe OF standard, whether it's TCP or Rocky. We are compliant. We are making sure that we follow those standards and we are running all the compliancy um, um, tests so that um, we, we follow those standards. So, Watch the space, um, watch Calray, MPPA, uh, K200, uh, Wistron Gboff, uh, very interesting set of tools moving forward. You will see more from us. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for your time here. I hope you enjoyed the session. Um, I hope we, ha we have a lot of exchange around Slack. Um, have a good day and see you next time. Bye-bye.